Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about our path, which is related to shared objects and library resolution and <laughs> other stuff like that. Um, I did a video on shared objects, which I will link in the description. I briefly talked about our path in that video, uh, but I wanted to elaborate on the topic and show you some examples and why it might be useful. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, for today we are making oh, a little bit of spoilers here. <laughs> I was looking at some of the code that we're going to be using today. Uh, we're going to be making an executable which compiles a little bit of SAS. Now, SAS is a preprocessor for CSS, and there is a somewhat deprecated but popular uh, C++ library called libsass, which provides a C interface for doing so. Uh, it's been kind of superseded by Dart SAS, but um, Dart SAS doesn't really have an equivalent for this, so show, we're going to show libsass today. Uh, and in order to do that, we are going to uh, install libsass-dev. Uh, this is going to bring in dev headers for us, and it's also going to bring in libsass1, which is the actual implementation of the library we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to be writing a small C program. Uh, let's open up t.c, and I have uh, code over here that I'm going to be copying a little bit uh, to make this happen. So we need a main function, main void, yeah, that's going to return zero. We are going to include sass slash context dot h. This is where libsass has its <laughs> C functions exported. Uh, we're also going to include standard io dot h because we're going to print the um, the output at the end. Just to show you something that works. Back in output, we're going to make some output variable there. All right, now we need some kind of complicated code to actually set up the sass context and run a compile. I'm just going to copy and paste that from over here. Uh, and the way libsass works is it kind of has a two-stage setup process. So there's a bunch of different context types. This is a data context, so it takes stuff from a string. Uh, and then there is a generic context, and this has kind of the output values or, or the error message. We're actually not doing any error handling here because we're just going to assume it's going to work. Um, but this context gets created from the, uh, well, first it gets compiled, then the context gets created from the, I guess I could have just uh, put this here since we're in modern versions of C and don't have to worry about, <laughs> you know, where, where variables get defined. Um, but yeah, we get the generic context out and then we can retrieve the output out of that context and do whatever we want with it. Uh, now we're going to put an input string here and that's going to be our source and we're just going to do something silly i don't know color red width uh, kind of the cool thing about uh, sass is you can do math and loops and functions and all sorts of other fun stuff um, we're just going to do two times two to show you that this can be multiplied to four i don't know um so that's our source and so this makes us a program which can compile this bit of source into some output string now a more interesting program would probably take a file or do something else like that, uh, but I wanted something dead simple just to demo this for you. And if we compile this, oops, t.c, uh, you'll see that we get some undefined references. Oh, let me put that down here so you can see them. We get undefined references to the uh, the SAS functions that we used in here, and that's because we forgot to link it against libsass, and you can do that by doing lsass. And so now we have an executable where if we run it, a.out, uh, you'll see that it did that special math for us, and here's kind of the compiled output of, of the SAS compiler. This is all stuff that I've showed you before. There's nothing super special about this here. If we run LDD on a.out, you'll see that it links against libsass, and that lives on our system here. Now, this executable isn't super useful on its own because you kind of have to be on a system where libsass exists, and libsass is a fairly rare... Uh, shared object to be just chilling on your system. To show you what it would look like if we didn't have it, let's use Docker. Uh, volume mount the current working directory to source in read-only mode. Uh, going to focal bash. Uh, oops, I forgot TI and RM. What am I doing? <laughs> There's a container chilling out there. I'll have to clean that up later. Uh, so if we cd to source, uh, we'll see this out out here. And if we try and run it, we're actually going to get an error message. Error while loading shared libraries, libsass.so.1 cannot open shared object file. And this is because this system, this Docker container, does not have libsass.so.1. So we can't, we can't do our, you know, 
you know, our dynamic linking fails and so we can't actually run our program, which is not what we want. We would love to be able to run our program. Now, one solution to this is static linking, which I talked about in that other video, um, but we kind of want, you know, dynamic linking here. So <laughs> we're going to use a concept called rpath or runpath. I actually don't know the difference between rpath and, and runpath, and inside my head, I think about them the same. Uh, but the idea behind runpath is it allows you to modify the library lookup path for an executable uh, and then distribute that executable with that modified lookup path. And so it allows you to bundle a bunch of shared objects together with your executable and ship them as one little unit. Uh, and so you would be able to distribute this libsas.so.1 and not worry about systems that don't have it available. Uh, this is actually the basis for the mini Linux uh, wheel specification that's used for um, Python wheels. Uh, but let me show you how you would use uh, our path here to you know, bundle up a set of executables or a, a set of executables and uh, shared objects and you know what that looks like with LDD and all the other inspection tools that we talked about there. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to vendor this shared object. So we're going to make a little lib directory here and we're going to copy this into lib. Uh, so now if we look at our tree here, you'll see we have lib libsas.so.1, uh, not to be confused with libass. <laughs> And uh, we have our ADAT out. This doesn't fix our problem. We still need to build this in a special way to reference this lib directory. And the way we can do that is with uh, passing special arguments to our linker. The way you do that in GCC is dash capital WL and then a comma, and then you can pass the argument to the linker. In, the ca in this case, we're going to be using the rpath argument and it takes a directory. There are other ways to take an executable and modify them after the fact. I'm not going to show them in this video, but there's a tool called patch.elf. There's a chrpath, which is specifically for rpath. Uh, and there's, you know, there's a ton of other tools out there. This is what audit wheel does, for instance, in, in the many Linux wheel case. Uh, but we're going to build one up front um, rather than having to stitch and unstitch an existing executable. Uh, so this is going to pass a special flag to the linker that tells it to look for linked libraries inside this directory. It's also going to stick a little thing into the executable that says uh, to the dynamic linker that it should look up things inside of this as well. And so if we do this, now we do LDD on that again, e dot out. You'll see that instead of resolving from the system, it is now resolving from this lib directory. And that's entirely as a side effect of running this rpath thing here. Uh, the other thing, actually, how do I even do that? Just obj jump. Uh, dash D. No, that's the disassembly. We don't need, we don't need that. <laughs> uh, it's, oh, it's, it's probably NM dash D. Nope. And, um, I just want to see the origin variable it's in here somewhere. Anyway, there, there's some stuff in the um, in the actual executable itself that uh, shows how to look up relative to the lib directory. Okay, but the cool thing now is I can basically zip up these two things and distribute that as a little bundle, and we can uh, run it on any other equivalent C uh, <laughs> equivalent you know compiler etc. system without having to have libsass available, <clears throat> and we can simulate that again by doing uh, running Docker here. If we CD into source, uh, we can still LDD this a dot out, and you'll see that it now still references relative to that lib directory, and we can run this executable without having, well, <laughs> I would say without having libsass.so.1, uh, but we've, you know, we have our own copy of it here rather than having it on our system. And so that's kind of how uh, you know, Python works with uh, wheels. So for instance, if I I make a virtual env here and I pip install oniguru ma cffi, which is a library that I wrote to bind a particular regex engine that you probably don't have it installed, although I think this machine does. Uh, grab, yeah, so this machine happens to have this installed, but <laughs> uh, if we look inside our virtual env here, we have lib, uh, you'll see that there's this oniguru ma cffi abi.so. And if we LDD that, you'll see that it is actually distributed uh, this dot libs directory and a copy of, of lib oneg5. 
particularly 5.2 here. Uh, and so, yeah, this this uh, <laughs> this kind of sidesteps the whole having to rely on the system to have the libraries available and instead stitches them together with RPath. Um, but anyway, that's our path. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.